In this video, I'm going to talk about email newsletters, a particular genre of publishing which involves curation um, and often sometimes some creation as well, some original creativity as well. Specifically, I'm going to talk about how email newsletters can be used as a way of develop developing your skills as a storyteller, but also your knowledge of a field and as a result, your profile as a journalist as well. I'm going to talk about what makes good curation uh, involved with that and some different genres of newsletter and different formats that you might use. So first of all, it's worth emphasising just how widespread newsletters are. It's easy to miss the fact that newsletters are extremely widespread in the news industry. In some research a few years ago, um, three quarters of publishers uh, that were surveyed had daily newsletters. So not just weekly, but daily newsletters. 57% had weekly newsletters. Um, of those newsletters, there was a lot of variety. So um, broadly speaking, you know, half were around general news, but more than half um, were specialist areas. We had areas ranging from lifestyle uh, and entertainment to special interests, hobbies, or just editor's picks. So there's a lot of variety in newsletters, even just in this research of a sample of 128 nationwide newsletter news outlets in 33 Western countries. This doesn't necessarily include uh, local outlets, specialist ones, magazines, broadcasters, and so on. When it comes to digital native outlets, newsletters are even more widespread. Some research in 2016 found that 97% of these, these are outlets like BuzzFeed, Vice, HuffPost, that have started on digital. Um, and um, the fact that they tend to have email newsletters as well. Newsletters are often used to um, test new markets. So because they're very cheap, you can use them as essentially a bit of a pilot for a particular publication idea and if it's successful if it picks up an audience you can again build on that audience with other products that might require more money. Now coming to newsletters and uh, the practical steps of planning and creating a newsletter generally you're, you're thinking along three different lines. The first is a, a very simple curating what's going on. So what does your reader need to know? A second purpose is to highlight uh, particular things that are happening either from your publication specifically uh, or a project that you're working on, an editorial project. This is different from the idea of curating news more generally, which might be from a range of different sources, not just your own. Uh, with highlights, you're focusing more on what you're doing. So it might be the best stories from your particular publication or if you're working on a project, for example, let's say it was it was looking at the Black Lives Matter protests, then um, you might talk about highlights from that project that you're working on, generally best with bigger projects. You could also do this around something like the Olympics or a big sporting event. The third purpose is really only if you have some sort of authority. This is a newsletter which shares your point of view on the week's uh, events, that sort of thing, quite similar to an opinion column. Now, like with opini opinion columns, really you are only in a position to do this if there's a reason why people might be interested in your point of view, and that's normally because you're an expert or a specialist correspondent, someone who's worked in this field for a number of years, is well-connected, knows what's going on. So for students, I would really avoid and recommend against this third approach. But uh, for interview industry, you may well consider it. And beyond those three broad uh, purposes, you also have a range of different formats. So it might be the top news of the day or the week. It might be the best of something, a particular issue. It might be more practically focused on tips and resources. Or you might have a format which is behind the scenes. That's another common approach in email newsletters. Remember, it's key to not just select uh, ingredients, what you're going to include in that newsletter, but also to reject stuff that might not make the cut. And to edit it really ruthlessly. Email newsletters are all about shortness, about succinctness, and about uh, someone getting a lot of information in a very short space of time, a lot of options 
for um, stories and links to follow. Links are really crucial as well because really all you're doing is summing up a story in one sentence and then linking so that they can read more if they need to. Personality takes on a bit more importance in an email newsletter than it might do in other formats like news or even features. Um, emails are very interpersonal, uh, medium, you're writing for one person so don't use phrases like hey everybody because people don't gather around an email in a crowd, it's just one person that you're talking to. And try and inject a little bit of informality if you can, it's quite a tricky skill to master. Visuals are really important to email, so include images, use emojis and embed videos as well. When you come to publish, uh, remember that the subject line is really important. It should be less than 30 characters. Um, you can have emojis in there as well and probably should try to get some in there. And um, remember it's got to compete with lots of other emails for your audience's attention. So I really do spend some time on that. And finally, before you send the email, proof it very carefully. It's a good idea to get someone else to sub-edit it to proof your email before you send in case you miss anything in your own writing. In most uh, email newsletter platforms you can send a test email and it's well worth doing this because there are things that you might only spot when you open it on a mobile phone or in an email client. This is all really important because unlike online journalism more generally you can't edit the story once it's been sent. The email goes out to everyone and mistakes cannot be rectified afterwards so do make sure that you proof it carefully. This is um, a layout that's optimised for clicks. You'll notice that a good email newsletter has those images that I mentioned but also lots of links and even things like bullet lists uh, and you can see in, in these two examples or in this um, screenshot that's split across two GIFs you know just how many links there are there and just how short the sentences are. Also the use of bold is quite important. To take you through some of these techniques I want to show you the um, HuffPost uh, BCU email newsletter and, uh, and how that puts some of those into practice. So first of all you can see we've got the, the use of a lot of emojis here in both the headline and as, as bullet points and we've got the image of the uh, editor this week so we've got that interpersonal touch and we're talking directly to the reader. As we go through the email newsletter we've got particular sections that's always worth thinking about in an email newsletter it's a bit like a, a mini publication so what are the sections going to be in your email newsletter what are they going to do for the audience and quite often they're going to be things like what did I miss this week what do I need to know today um, what's the kind of pick of the week, what's the video of the week, things like that. Those are quite common sections so look at lots of examples and, and pick up ideas on what are common um, sections in email newsletters. In this case we've got what did I miss and you can see again these are short sentences with a link, each one of them with a link. We've got the use of emoji, we've got bold as well so it's nice and punchy. And then in the HuffPost BCU email newsletter every week we have a piece of original content so everything here, what did I miss, this is all about, um, this is curation, this is stuff from around the web and actually if I go back into the introduction we've got some uh, stuff from around the web here as well, sometimes original information that we've picked up so this particular one is actually a link to a um, Google Drive file so it's not something that's been picked up from around the web but most of the email newsletter is curated but in this case and in a number of email newsletters you'll find one section which might have something original and in this case it's essentially a, a little interview with someone from HuffPost about a particular story or product or issue that they've been involved with recently uh, in this case it's the host of a new podcast and just talking about the process behind that. Again, visual is important, we've got an image of the person in question. And it just makes this newsletter, gives it something original alongside the curation, gives it some variety. So if you're able to add something original alongside your curation,
then that's going to really improve the quality of your work and obviously improve the uh, news gathering element of your uh, journalism studies. I want to show you another example. This is the fake newsletter that BuzzFeed produce. And again, as with the BCU one, we've got a, a masthead image at the top, which really emphasizes the brand. But what this also does is emphasize the two personalities that are involved in the newsletter. And, and I particularly like this example because this newsletter uses a dialogue format. It's a, essentially a conversation between Jane and Craig with um, each line of dialogue making up a paragraph in the email newsletter. So it's, it's quite a, an unusual approach and quite an effective one as a result, quite a creative one. Having two presenters always works well on TV because they can bounce off each other and they've, they've used this same approach, kind of carried that into an email newsletter. We've still got sections, subheadings, questions, We've still got an introduction here, which introduces um, almost as a, like a magazine feature stand first. BuzzFeed news reporters Craig Silverman and Jane Litvinenko bring you insight and recommended readings. So that introduces them in the third person before we get them speaking to each other here. Also note the very short subject line of the email newsletter and um, and it's a little bit cryptic so it's 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 kind of trying to tempt the reader in quite an ambitious approach um, but they managed to pull it off and this on the left is the rest of this uh, or another part of this email newsletter and we can see again it still has sections it has the latest from our team so this is a project based newsletter about um, verification and these are simply linked titles of stories in a bullet list so very very punchy no description at all then we've got a worth reading section and this is a, a bit more wordy we've got jane talking about why she's picked something again link um, but again kind of playing on the idea of the personality of the author on the right here we've got a, a third example this is graphic content and this is a really simple email newsletter it's um, just got a masthead image and it just says morning today's links and again we've just got a bunch of sections and bullet point lists with links and where the stories are from so this is very boiled down it's just a, a roundup a summary and that's another type of approach you can take as well it doesn't give you much opportunity to show off your writing skill your technical skill but it is a genre to be aware of so having looked at email newsletters it's now your turn to create one of your own. When you do this, it's really important that you look at examples for inspiration and for guidance on what the kind of rules of the genre are. The link at the top there gives you um, 41 different newsletters, email newsletters for journalists interested in social media. So these are all actually newsletters aimed at journalists and they're about the industry. So this is essentially the industry press. If you follow some of these newsletters, you've actually got two advantages to this. First of all, you're going to get an idea of how newsletters are constructed. You're going to get an idea of the rules of the genre and you're going to get inspiration for ideas that you can apply in your own newsletter. But secondly, these are newsletters about your industry. So you're going to learn about best practice in social media and journalism more generally that you can apply in your work throughout your studies and you can refer to the links in these newsletters so they'll link to uh, interviews research things like that you can refer to that in your evaluation as well the bottom link are newsletters that i've bookmarked as well so again some of these will be about journalism some of these will be about other fields as well so you can have a look at those and subscribe to newsletters um, from there as well and again, it's important to read about best practice and reference that. So we've got three links there to articles that um, give you advice on starting newsletters, what makes them successful. Read those and refer to them in your evaluation. Just one example of that to um, 
finish off with. Um, this is how you might refer to some of the um, research and reading that you've done as part of your as part of your work on email newsletters. So in your evaluation, you might write a sentence that reads something like, you know, before I created my newsletter, I looked at a number of newsletters and I noticed this. So because you've looked at the newsletters, you've picked up some of the rules of the genre and you're talking about how that research has influenced your work. In this case, you might say something like see Appendix B. And then in Appendix B, you would include some evidence of the newsletters that you've looked at. So that might be screenshots or a list of the newsletters or it might even be some analysis that you've done. You might have written a formal piece of analysis as a blog post, for example, of what these newsletters do. Um, but basically just include some evidence of how you have looked at those or which ones you've looked, those, looked at. Then you might say something like Wang, brackets 2018, says that call-outs can be successful in emails, so I use this approach. So again, you're referring to some, this is an article, this is one of the articles I mentioned earlier, and what they say about best practice in email. So you're using a reference to show that you've read about best practice, and then you would have a bibliography at the end of your evaluation, which gives the full name, Wang, comma, first name, and then the title of the article and the date in 2018 using Harvard referencing. So that's how you would use that sort of reading in your evaluation. That's what you should be doing. Some key points then to round up here. First of all, remember that email newsletters are part of most journalism operations. So this is a really useful employable skill and also it's something that's not taught a lot in journalism education. So you really set yourself apart by saying, first of all, that you know how to edit one and second of all, that you have actually edited one. Even apart from that, newsletters are really good as a way of developing a habit of background reading around your subject and developing an audience and developing knowledge about your field. So if you're interested in fashion and you're having to do a weekly email newsletter about fashion, then you're really going to know a lot about fashion as a result. Uh, it really helps you become a better journalist and build contacts, networks, audiences and so on. As I've mentioned, this is a genre, so I'll learn the rules by reading lots of email newsletters and reading about email newsletters, reading interviews with people who publish them and so on. And finally, some of those rules include being selective, being succinct, being visual and being personal, being informal in the way that you write.